this mini course. Uh, as you can see from the title, I'm going to talk about uh, multiplicity, uh, which is a, a very important uh, invariant of the model uh, and uh, important concept in most community algebra and algebraic geometry. Uh, so uh, I will tell the outline of um, each lecture what uh, we are going to uh, learn in this course. So uh, what uh, we do, I mean the, the main goal of this lecture is to uh, present uh, the famous theorems of Sir about multiplicity which uh, gives us a, a nice criterion for the climacoliness of a module in terms of multiplicity uh, of the module. Uh, and we, we will give the uh, needed background for this. Uh, we uh, try to uh, give, uh, I mean, all the basic information, uh, definitions and uh, basic theorems about the Hilbert series. Um, along the way, also systems of parameters play a role. So um, for those who, uh, I mean, don't know this concept, I will give the definition. So this is all uh, we will do in the first uh, three lectures to be able to prove uh, this criterion for climacoliness by Sir. And the goal of uh, lecture four is to see how advanced algebraic techniques uh, can help us to uh, solve some problems uh, which uh, arises in combinatorics. Namely, we apply this criterion of climacoliness to ideals which we call ideals of quantum type. Uh, which are, uh, I mean, the extensions of the concept of uh, uh, graphs uh, in combinatorics. So let's start uh, with um, the definition of Hilbert series uh, in our setting. Okay, before I start, uh, I should give you the references, the main reference that uh, I really follow for this lecture is the book um, Body Bones and Perso, which all of you know, Climate Polyrules. And uh, another reference that you can use is by um, there, the book Local Algebra, which is in fact the English translation of the lecture notes of Ser. Uh, so, uh, as I told you, I mainly follow um, the first reference. So, let's start with the definition of the Hilbert function and Hilbert series. First, uh, uh, we said or ring and model. So uh, in our setting, R is always the non-negatively graded ring. Uh, such that R0 is a local Artinian ring. And uh, R as an R0 algebra is a standard graded, finitely generated standard graded. R0 algebra. Which means that uh, as an R0 algebra, R is generated by homogeneous elements of uh, degree 1. So, uh, we consider M to be a finitely generated graded R module. 
So with this setting, we want to define what is the Hilbert function and what is the Hilbert series of them. First of all, when we have these assumptions on the ring and the module, we know that uh, each MI, which we know that each MI is an R0 uh, module, is in fact a finitely generated R0 module because M is a finitely generated R module. So for any I in Z, we know that MI is a finitely generated R0 module. And because uh, we consider R0 to be an Artinian ring, this implies that uh, the length of each MI as R0 module is finite. So all these uh, MIs are, have finite lengths, so we can uh, attach uh, a numerical function to the module M. And um, this defined in terms of these lenses. So uh, I don't repeat this assumption. So for the whole lecture, R is such a ring and M is uh, such a graded module. Uh, so the function. which goes from z to z such that sends any integer n to the length of mn as an r0 module, which uh, we saw that is a finite number. This function is called the Hilbert function of n. And uh, a series which have these um, uh, lenses as uh, coefficients, we call the Hilbert series of M. So the Hilbert series of M is a series which is defined as T to the N, uh, N in Z. Uh, with all setting, uh, because M is a uh, finitely generated R module, we know that for uh, a small i, M i's are all uh, zero. So this is in fact a formal neural series. So we call this the Hilbert series of M. Uh, okay, both the Hilbert function and the Hilbert series contain uh, important information of the module. Uh, during this lecture, our goal is to understand better the structure of this uh, function and this series and see uh, how some information of the module can be read from these uh, uh, objects. To know uh, about the structure of the Hilbert function, I'm going to define what is a, a, a numerical function of polynomial type. So let f from z to z be a numerical function. Uh, we say that f is of polynomial type of degree d if um, 
And uh, in the next demo, we want to show that um, F has this property and it's a polynomial type. We can only leave this delta DF is a uh, constant function for large N. So this is the statement of all for next lemma. Let F from Z to Z be a numerical function. And D be a positive integer. Then we want to show that the following statement, the statements are equivalent. First of all, uh, F is of polynomial type. Of degree D. Uh, this is equivalent to say that delta df n is some constant which is non zero for large n. This lemma, in fact, helps us to prove the uh, theorem about the Hilbert function why it is a polynomial type, so we use this criteria. Uh, from 1 to 2 is easy to see because uh, I mean from the definition of this operator you can see that f, if f is a polynomial type of degree d and you do this subtract then uh, delta f is a polynomial type of degree 1 less. So uh, if, you, if you do it d times then the degree goes down by d. So one to two, uh, I will say clear, uh, because each time this operator decreases the degree of the polynomial by one. 
So let's see from 2 to 1. If we have this equality for delta D. For large n. We want to show that to get this a polynomial of delta D to D. We do this by uh, induction on D. So for D equals 0, what does this mean? Uh, delta 0 f we consider to be f itself. So this means that f is equal to some constant. So of course, it's uh, a polynomial of, of degree 0. I should mention that by convention, we consider the zero polynomial to be of degree minus one, and the con non-zero constant uh, of degree polynomial of degree zero. So, in this case, delta zero f is just f, and when f for large n is non-zero constant, then uh, f is a polynomial type of degree zero. Now suppose that for d minus 1, uh, this holds, and uh, we have this equality for large n. So if we want to use induction, we can uh, write this as delta d minus 1 of delta of n. And uh, by definition, I can replace this by fn plus 1 minus fn. So for large n, this is supposed to be a non-zero constant. So by induction hypothesis, uh, we conclude that uh, this function inside parentheses is a polynomial type of degree d minus 1. So there exists a polynomial, we call it gx, gqx, such that uh, for large n, this uh, function okay I, I should write of degree d minus one because here we have delta d minus one so this is equal to g n or large n say for n greater than or equal to n zero uh, so for large n, I can write fn plus 1. I mean, if I put the values from n0 on up to n, then I can write this as fn0 plus sigma of g i i prime uh, n0 to n. So uh, now, uh, now I use this uh, fact that g is, of, uh, is a polynomial of degree d minus 1. And uh, what we do in this sigma, we add up, uh, for example, if g is like this, a d minus 1, x d minus 1, plus lower terms, then when we add up uh, all the, um, for all the uh, integers from 1 to n, we add up um, d minus 1 powers, uh, this will be a polynomial of degree d. This is known as Paul Haber formula in So when I do this sum uh, with a polynomial of degree d minus 1, 
I will get a polynomial of degree D. And this is a constant. So this is what I uh, wanted to get. So for large n, f is equal to such a polynomial. So it is of polynomial type of degree D. So uh, we use this uh, equivalence uh, to our next theorem, which we want to show that uh, any uh, Hilbert function is of polynomial type of some nice degree. Somehow later, sometimes I use some of them, like this exercise. But, uh, so let f be from z to z, like the situation here, a numerical function, and d be a positive integer. Uh, So that uh, delta df on n can be computed by this sigma. Induction on D. Uh, so we will use this formula later. Now I want to uh, state one of the main theorems of this lecture about the nature of the Hilbert function. So, as I told, our assumption is always uh, on R and M as I wrote in the beginning. I don't repeat them each time. So we want to show that uh, the Hilbert function of M is a polynomial type. d minus 1, where d is the dimension of the model. Uh, so, for the proof, Induction on the on the dimension. Uh, if the dimension is zero, what does this mean? Uh, the module has finite lens. Because our model is uh, graded, this lens is some of the lenses of MIs as our zero models. 
and when the sum is finite, this means that only, I mean, except finite remaining indices, all the lenses are zero. So I can say that this lens is zero for large n of i or n. And uh, because this is exactly the Hilbert function of them, this means that h of m and n is equal to zero for large n. So the polynomial that we are looking for uh, is just a zero polynomial. And uh, as I told you by convention, we consider the zero polynomial to be of degree minus one. So this um, is a polynomial of degree d minus one. So the Hilbert function is a polynomial of, of the right degree. Uh, so we may assume that d is positive. And uh, suppose that for d minus 1, uh, the result holds. Uh, we want to reduce to uh, a case that the module m is uh, an integral domain tau. So what we aim, we show that we may reduce case n equal to arm of p uh, for some graded prime ideal p. Reduced to this case, we can choose a non zero divisor, and uh, modding out by this, we can reduce the dimension and use uh, induction hypothesis. So, uh, um, to prove this, uh, I use the fact that for any graded I mo uh, R module M, uh, in fact, for any finite which is graded R module M, there is a prime filtration, which I will write down what it means. And in the case that M is also graded, this filtration can be chosen that uh, all these submodules are also graded. So this M uh, is finitely generated. There exists a graded. Concentration for M. What we mean by a prime filtration is a chain of uh, submodules of M. Such that uh, each MI mod MI minus one is isomorphic to the quotient ring arm of pi. Here, pi is a prime ideal of the ring. And when we say a graded prime filtration, we mean that these PI, pi's are graded ideals. We can find this theorem in uh, basic in books of JD uh, algebra. Uh, so how uh, this filtration helps us? We consider that uh, for each i, we will have the natural short exact sequences of this form. 
And uh, as you see from the definition of the Hilbert function, it's just defined as a lens. And we know that when we have a short exact sequence lens of the middle one, if it has finite lens, it's equal to the sum of lenses of uh, this submodel. So um, we can write um, the Hilbert function of which mi. the sum of these two Hilbert functions. And instead of mi mod mi minus 1, I put r mod pi. So if I do this for all i uh, between 1 and n, uh, and use repeatedly this formula, I can write the Hilbert function of m. Uh, by the sum of uh, I mean this h uh, of the r mod p n plus h m n minus one. Again, I replace this by the other sum. So finally, we get this sum. Uh, I goes from one to n. So. The Hilbert function of M can be explained at, at, in terms of the Hilbert function of such rings. So what is our goal? We want to show that this is a polynomial type of degree D. So if we show that uh, at least one of them uh, is of polynomial type, uh, I mean, we want to show that we can reduce to this case. So if we know that for such rings, these are of polynomial type of degree D, um, we should note that the leading coefficient of these polynomials cannot be negative because for large n, the, um, the length is always positive. So this polynomial cannot have the leading coefficient, which is negative. So all the leading coefficients of these polynomials are positive. So if we add them together for sure, this is again of a uh, polynomial type of degree D. One other fact that is important uh, to show that we can reduce is that at least one of these strings has, should have dimension D because we want to show that uh, they are a polynomial type of degree one less than dimension. So this is important that at least one of these strings have the same dimension as the model. But this is true from um, from these short exact sequences because we can see that the support of, again, the support of the middle one is the union of the support of the, these two modules. And we can again use repeatedly for each index, we can get support of M is the union of support of these uh, quotient modules, which are the same as this string. And the support of this string is just the variety of PI. So, because um, these uh, PIs are the minimal elements in the support, so for sure at least one of them have, has, uh, uh, has this property that dimension of R mod PI is exactly the dimension of M. So there exists I between 1 and N such that dimension of M is exactly the dimension of R mod PI is equal to D. This guarantees that at, we have at least one polynomial here of degree D minus 1. So as I explained, the coefficients are non-negative, so it cannot be cancelled. So if we can prove the theorem for such rings, uh, this equality shows that for M is also true. So from now on, we assume that M uh, is of the form R mod P. Such that P is a graded prime ideal. So uh, 
we know that um, Farmot P is an integral domain. And uh, since D, which is dimension of module, which is now the dimension of R mod P, we are discussing the case that D is positive. Uh, this means that uh, P cannot be the unique graded maximal ideal of your name. By the setting that we have on the ring, if you remember, R was a non-negatively graded ring, uh, such that R0 was uh, an Austinian local ring. And in this case, our uh, ring R has a unique graded maximal ideal, which is precisely uh, N plus Uh, the positive degrees. So by me, by M, I mean uh, this uh, maximal ideal of the ring R. Uh, and uh, this inequality holds because um, otherwise, um, if P is M, then dimension of R mod M is zero because it would be a field. So. Uh, this means that we can choose an element uh, from the maximal ideal, which is not in P, and because another setting that we have on the ring is that the ring is a standard graded, which means that this maximal ideal uh, is generated by homogeneous elements of degree one. So uh, we can find a find generator in M of degree one, which is not in P. So there exists X in M minus P, which is homogeneous of degree one. Um, so in the, I mean, the residual class of X in this ring, because X is not in P, is non-zero. So if I put x bar to be x plus p in this ring, this is a non-zero element. And because R mod p is an integral domain, this is in fact a non-zero divisor. So I will have a short exact sequence uh, which the first map is just multiplication by, by this non-zero divisor. Uh, and here I just divide by this element, which will get x and p and 0. And to keep it um, to be graded, I should put uh, shift the, the degree by the degree of x bar, which is 1. So I will have this short exact sequence of graded homomorphisms. So uh, the Hilbert function of the middle one is the sum of these two Hilbert functions. So I can write Hilbert of R mod P. I compute it in n plus one, which you can see the reason. Uh, this Hilbert function in n plus one, uh, because we should consider this shift also, this is just Hilbert function of R mod P in n. This is how the shifts work plus the Hilbert function of R mod X and P. So if you notice, this is exactly uh, the uh, difference operator. So I can write this difference as delta H of R mod P and N equal to Uh, H of R mod P, X and P plus N plus 1. So, 
we could write uh, the uh, difference operator of H in terms of the Hilbert function of this new ring. But this new ring ha has a nice property that the dimension is exactly one less than the dimension of R mod Q. Why? Because we divide it by a non-zero divisor element. So we know that the dimension of this ring is d minus 1. Um, so by induction hypothesis, I can say that this function is a polynomial type of degree uh, d minus 2, one less than this number. Uh, if you remember, we had a lemma which uh, uh, gave us an equivalence for a polynomial, uh, for a function to be of polynomial type, which uh, in this case means that delta d minus 2 of uh, h of r mod xp and n is equal to some constant non-zero constant for large n. This is exactly the statement of the lemma applying to the Hilbert function of this ring. So, if in this equality I apply delta d minus 2 to both sides, I will get delta d minus 1 of R mod P and N is equal to t delta D minus 2 of T. So this is equal to C, which is non zero. And again, applying the lemma, we get that. Sorry, this is Hilbert. Uh, we get that H of R mod P and N is a polynomial type. one and this is what we are looking for so uh, it is proved that um, any Hilbert function is a polynomial type of degree d minus one uh, What does this mean? This means that I can write uh, for large n instead of the Hilbert function, I can write it in terms of polynomial. We call this polynomial the Hilbert polynomial of n. So um, let's give it a dimension of our model. And uh, I show this polynomial by p sub m. which is a polynomial in Qx. The polynomial of degree d minus 1, such that for large n, the deeper function coincides with this polynomial. So we call Pm the Hilbert polynomial of M. Uh, so this is where the uh, multiplicity shows itself when we write down the Hilbert polynomial in terms of a ninth basis of uh, Qx. Uh, 
check that. Um, um, one choose x, you choose. Okay, let's write it in this way. For any i, um, x plus i choose i. Uh, where i goes from 1 to uh, this uh, polynomials form a basis for qx this is an easy exercise to see because in fact uh, these polynomials produce for us 1x x squared etc so it generates qx and also you can easily check that they are linearly independent so any polynomial in Qx can be written in terms of this basis. Let's write Pnx. Uh, let's say Pnn because we care about uh, integers. Be written in terms of this basis. For some technical reasons, uh, I will put uh, minus 1 to some power here. Later you will see the reason. The coefficients which come from Q I show by uh, E sub D minus 1 minus I. So I just write uh, this polynomial in Qx in terms of this basis with some coefficients which come from Q and I, I just I allow to set this such that I have uh, in, um, coefficients minus 1 or 1. So I go from 0 to D minus 1. So uh, what is the um, uh, highest degree term of this polynomial? If we just put I to be D minus 1, we will have E0 uh, x plus d minus 1, d minus 1, plus uh, lower quantities. So here we will have um, e0 times uh, x plus 1 mod out by d minus 1 factorial plus lower terms. So uh, the coefficient, what we care is the coefficient of the, I mean the leading coefficient of this polynomial is just E0 divided by d minus 1 factorial x to the power d minus 1 plus lower terms. So here we can define the multiplicity, just this E0 that you, you see here is defined to be the multiplicity of the model N. So the number E0 is called uh, the multiplicity in the case that uh, D is positive. So let me write it as a formal definition. Uh, let D be the dimension of the model. Uh, the multiplicity of M. defined as we show it by EM. So if D is positive and we have a polynomial which we call Hilbert polynomial of degree D minus 1 with some leading coefficient, we, we consider this E0 which is d minus 1 factorial times the leading coefficient. And if d is 0, which we know that in this case the model have, has finite length, we just 
to find it to be the length of the map. So this is uh, what it means in the open module. Uh, in this lecture, I mean, we will continue with the uh, structure of the Hilbert series and we will uh, find another description of the multiplicity in terms of um, some invariant in the Hilbert series. So uh, I want to give you an exercise, but before uh, I, I should define what is the first iterated Hilbert function of n. So the definition is just uh, we add all the Hilbert functions up to degree n. So the sum of uh, Hilbert functions uh, for uh, maybe we have also negative integers here, or less than or equal to n, we will call it the first iterated Hilbert function. Um, an uh, easy observation is that because if you compute delta h1 uh, of n plus 1, what this means that we add up up to degree n plus 1 and then we remove the Hilbert function up to degree n. So what remains is just Hilbert function of n in n plus 1. So if we apply the difference operator uh, delta d minus 1 to this equality, what we get in, in this part, we get delta d of h1 is equal to delta d minus 1 of h. So because we, we prove that this uh, the, Hilbert uh, the Hilbert function is of polynomial type of degree d minus 1, this means that this is equal to non-zero constant. So what we get is that delta d of h1 is a non-zero constant. And then we uh, conclude that h1 is a polynomial type of degree d. Exercise is that uh, to explain a multiplicity in terms of in terms of some coefficient of uh, the Hilbert uh, the polynomial defined in this. So we have a polynomial of degree d such that for large n this coincides with h1. Uh, this means that h1 can be written as some coefficients with this basis that we used before for Hilbert polynomial also. Because this is of degree d, so I goes from 0 to d. So what I want you to show is that show that this ad is exactly the multiplicity. Um, this can be easily done just, just use um, this equality because we can we describe we describe this in terms of the Hilbert polynomial so just compare the leading coefficients. So as a corollary, uh, we can uh, write the M as uh, 
can explain it in terms of this link. Because for large n, we say that this is a polynomial type of degree p. So the, the limit of this uh, h1 uh, mod by nd is just the leading coefficient of uh, h1. And if we, add, we prove that um, ad is em, what is the leading coefficient here? It's just ad. I mean, the leading coefficient come from this polynomial. So uh, this is the leading coefficient. Um, which is uh, just b m divided by d factorial. So we get this equality for multiplicity. This equality is very important for us because later we want to uh, extend the concept of multiplicity to um, we define the multiplicity of an ideal with respect to a model uh, and uh, for any local game when we want to uh, pass to the associated graded ring or the associated graded model um, this equality shows that these two definitions are compatible so maybe we will have a break for 10 minutes. Okay, welcome back. Everybody. Uh, so we saw uh, the definition of multiplicity. Now we want to investigate the structure of the Hilbert series of the model and see how the multiplicity can be lived uh, from the Hilbert series. As I uh, explained, uh, when I defined the Hilbert series, this is a uh, Laurel series, uh, which by, by Laurel series, I, I mean a series which uh, for a small n, uh, the coefficients of uh, p to the n are zero. And this is the case uh, in, by our setting because, uh, as I told, m is a finitely generated R model. So for a small n, all the m i's are zero. Otherwise, we can uh, find a strictly increasing chain of submodules of n, which is not possible. Uh, so, uh, in general, when we have a Laurel series like uh, a n t to the n. such that uh, these uh, coefficients are integers. And as I told you, AIs are zero for small n i. Then uh, the following statements are equivalent. We want to consider the case that happens for Hilbert series, uh, namely uh, these uh, coefficients uh, an come from a function which is of polynomial type of some degree, say d minus 1. This is the case when here we have the Hilbert function. So if we consider the function n, which sends any n to this coefficient a n, this is um, of polynomial type. Of degree d minus 1. I should say here that d is a, it is a positive integer d. Um, 
so whenever we have this uh, condition, this is equivalent to say that, let's call this series at um, H3. Then we can write this uh, series as a uh, fraction such that the uh, denominator uh, is a Loro polynomial with uh, integer coefficients and uh, value in one is not zero. So uh, this is what we want to prove. And uh, if we show this equivalence, we can apply it as I proved for the Hilbert function and get such a description for the Hilbert series of the module. So let's go from one to two. So the assumption is that these coefficients come from a function which is a polynomial type. And we want to find uh, such a polynomial uh, Q. So simply we just set Q to be the this product so we need to show that uh, this is a Loro polynomial and uh, this value is not zero so this I can write as sigma a n t to the n times so I, I write the binomial expansion of this uh, as sigma minus 1 to the i, uh, b choose i, b to the p, i from 0 to p. So, uh, what we get is, let's say, sigma c n t to the n, and uh, we, we can describe this c n, in terms of the, this difference operator uh, for n. So when here I, I will get uh, t to the n, um, so <clears throat> Um, so if, if this power is going to be n here, I should have a n uh, minus i. Sorry, this is i, not d, for sure. <laughs> so it can be easily seen that uh, the coefficient of tn in, this, uh, in the left-hand side is this sigma. And... Uh, if you remember, I gave an exercise that described uh, the delta D of F. If I apply this equality for this sigma, this is exactly delta D F of N minus D. So just check this equality and with these numbers, uh, HCN can be described in terms of this uh, difference operator. So now, we use the assumption that f is a polynomial type of degree d minus 1. Uh, what does this mean for large n delta d minus 1 is equal to some non-zero constant? So, uh, By our assumption, we have this is some non-zero constant for large n. Uh, 
So if I apply another time the difference operator uh, for large n, I have a constant c minus c, which is zero. So delta b f n minus b. No matter if I say n or n minus t because we, we make n big enough. So this is zero for large n. So because c n's are described in terms of these um, uh, difference operators, we get that c n is zero for large n. Uh, also, for a small n of n, c n is zero. Why? Because c n is written in terms of the a n's. And the a n's from the assumption are zero for a small n of i. So, this I can write for large n of and for a small n of. So, only finitely many of these c n's are non zero. So, what does this mean? This means that this is a Polynomial, in fact, a normal polynomial. So the only thing remains to show is that uh, the value of Q at one is non zero. So what is Q one? Q one is just the, the sigma of CNs because. This is Q. So if I replace each CN by delta D, and having in mind that only finitely many of uh, them are non zero. So if I write it, uh, if I write delta D as delta d minus 1 of delta of f and apply delta to f, I will get fn plus 1 minus d minus fn minus d. So as I told you, because I have only, we have only finitely many of them, they will cancel and what remains is only the last one, which is delta d minus 1 of of some large m or n large m. So what we get is that q q1 is equal to delta d minus 1 f of m for large m and uh, by the lemma that I mentioned at the beginning of the lectures when we have a polynomial uh, a polynomial type function of degree d minus 1, this is equivalent to say that this is a non-zero constant. So because this is non-zero, q1 is also non-zero. So we can uh, write ht in terms of, I mean, as, as this fraction with, uh, with q1 non-zero. Uh, to prove uh, 2 to 1, we do the same. In fact, we have not much to do uh, because uh, we show that what uh, the coefficients C and R. So uh, suppose that H T can be described in this term, then Q is sigma C and T to the in. Uh, I just repeat this equality that I proved here, uh, which is sigma, I replace uh, Cn by delta D. And I can go to this step. This is delta D minus 1 F of N for N large N. So, uh, sorry. Uh, okay, let's see it in a better way. Q1, by our assumption, no, we want to go from 2 to 1, but by our assumption, Q1 is non zero, and this is just the sigma of Cn. 
and this is just delta d minus 1 f of m or large m of m. So if q1 is non-zero, this means that this is non-zero. And by the lemma that I repeatedly use, this means exactly that f is of polynomial type of degree d minus 1. So the theorem is proved, and we can apply it to uh, the Hilbert function uh, uh, instead of f. So as a corollary, let D uh, be equal to the dimension of the model. Uh, there exists. Polynomial Q Qz T T minus one such that the Hilbert function can be written as such a fraction. I, I call this Qm because it is attached to M. So Qm of T one minus T to the D such that QM1 is in Z. So if uh, D is positive, this is exactly the statement of the theorem because uh, uh, as I told you, if I put let D be positive uh, and F just be the Hilbert function, in the previous theorem, then um, because the Hilbert function is a polynomial type of degree d minus one, we just have uh, such description for the Hilbert series. But what about d equal to zero? So this is by previous theorem. True. So. When d is zero, uh, so here we should just have uh, the Hilbert series should be equal to some polynomial because this is one here. In this case, uh, as we discussed before, uh, this means that the length of model is finite, which is the length uh, sigma of the length of MIs as our zero model. Uh, so, for large n, these lenses are zero. Because on only finitely many of them can be non zero when, when the sum is finite. So, for large n, the lens is zero and uh, so the Hilbert function, uh, the Hilbert series is just sigma lens of mn by definition. So we only have finitely many terms. And uh, we, we put this exactly to be qmt because this is in fact a polynomial. So what is qm1 in this case? It's just the sum of the lenses, which is the lens of the model. And when our model is non zero, of course, the lens is non zero. So, at any case, we have such a description for the Hilbert series of them. So, uh, our next goal is to see um, 
how uh, the multiplicity can be read from the Hilbert series. We, we saw the definition that um, uh, multiplicity is some integer times the coefficient of the Hilbert polynomial, but it also can be read from the Hilbert series. Uh, in fact, not only uh, the multiplicity, but also all the EIs. If you remember, we wrote the Hilbert polynomial uh, as such a sum. Uh, all these uh, coefficients it turns out to be integers, and they can be read from uh, this polynomial. This is what we want to put in the next theorem. So for any i between 0 and b minus 1, we want to show that the i is equal to just the i's derivative of qm, its value at 1, modeled by i factorial. So in particular, multiplicity is just qm1. In the case that uh, B is zero dimensional, here you can see that multiplicity is QM1 because we defined in, in the zero dimensional case multipli multiplicity just as the length of the model. And here you can see that the length is exactly QM1. So for positive B, this is also true. No questions so far. So, if we uh, show this equality, this in fact implies that all the EIs are integers. Uh, because when we do this derivative, I mean, this, this coefficient uh, will be of bi a binomial type, and this is always an integer. So, in particular, the multiplicity of n is an integer, and in fact, a positive integer, because, as I told you, the leading coefficient of the Hilbert polynomial cannot be negative, otherwise the, the length will become negative. So, to prove this uh, equality, we consider um, Uh, the difference of uh, two polynomials, one is QMT and the other one is just uh, the Taylor expansion of QM up, up to degree B minus 1. Because um, the coefficients of QM are in integers, and these coefficients also, sorry, this is I factorial. These coefficients are also integers. This belongs to ZT and T minus 1. Uh, it can be easily checked that. Uh, uh, 
This is just a Taylor expansion of Qm at 1. Uh, it can be easily checked that all the derivatives of d up to degree d minus 1 are 0. So um, this implies that 1 minus d will be d divides dt. This can be checked easily by induction. Uh, on d, for example, and you can reduce to the case that this d is in fact in z t, uh, not z of t and t minus one, just by uh, multiplying uh, this by a suitable power of t, high enough power. So we can, uh, for this uh, statement, you can assume that this in fact belongs to z t. So. I can divide uh, both sides by this polynomial and still uh, be in zt and t minus 1. So I will have dt So if I divide q mt by 1 minus t to the d, this is exactly the inverse series. So I just write h and t minus. And here, if I divide by this, I will have 1 minus t to the d minus 5. So I call this series st. So each time I don't have to repeat this. Um, because um, this polynomial device dt, we know that this belongs to zt and t minus 1. I will write uh, this fraction as in this form. Then I can replace each of them by six sigma. So what I will have is a series of this form. Uh, so what is the coefficient of uh, Tn here? This is exactly the, so how many of this series we have? D minus i. So Cn is exactly the number of uh, non-negative solutions for such um, equation ig minus i equal to n such that uh, these integers are non negative. And okay, this is, well, I mean, in combinator, this is not hard to see that this number is exactly d minus i minus 1 here, and here uh, n plus d minus i minus 1. So if I replace this fraction, I mean 1 uh, mod this uh, polynomial, I can write um, st as such a series. Uh, okay, let's say n. 
and here I. So the coefficients that I have there, I will write down. Times um, this coefficient Cn that we get here. So uh, what I have is that uh, HMT, also let me write down H, the Hilbert series, because this is just HMT, HMNT to the end. And uh, for large N, we know that this is uh, the just the Hilbert polynomial. So what I want to use from this equality is that because the difference of two series is a polynomial, this means that for large N, all the coefficients of Tn in these two series are the same. So For large n, the coefficients of Tn here is just the Hilbert polynomial, which is, let me write down the Hilbert polynomial again in terms of this. of these two series is a polynomial for large n, the coefficient of Tn here is equal to the coefficient of Tn here. But the coefficient of Tn here is just this difference. Um, yeah. uh, I will have this equality. This, this term, sorry, this term also should be here. So these two things should be equal because they are the coefficients of Tn in these two series. I can rewrite this but by, by, by the change of the indices here as such a sigma. Each time I compare the leading coefficient of both sides, 
which are equal, then I cancel them, then I go to the next degree. And in the next degree, I will have, um, after E0, I will have E1. So E1 is just Q M1, uh, 1 by 1 factorial. So for each EJ, I will have this equality. So as I told, this equality uh, implies that all these uh, coefficients are uh, integers. And the reason that uh, I told you why we put some minus one here is that we like to have the coefficients that we can explain them in terms of uh, this derivative. This is why we put minus one to the d minus uh, one minus i uh, in these coefficients. So let's end this part with the exercises. So I don't repeat the assumption R is a standard uh, positively graded, finitely generated over R0. R0 is Artinian, like the assumptions that we have the whole lecture. So let F1 to FR uh, be a regular sequence in R. Uh, and I be generated by this regular sequence. So that the multiplicity of R mod I is, uh, okay, let's, let me set uh, each degree of the degree of each fi by ai. So these fi's are homogeneous elements in the ring. They form a regular sequence with such degrees. So show that the multiplicity of r mod i is equal to uh, the product of these degrees times the multiplicity of r. Uh, for those who are familiar with simply shell complex, um, Stanley raised the rings, uh, let delta be a simply shell complex. Uh, K delta be the Stanley raised the ring delta over the field K. So we have a nice formula for the multiplicity of k delta, uh, which is purely combinatorial. So that this is exactly the number of those facets or those spaces, no difference in this case, such that the dimension of the place uh, is equal to the dimension of delta itself. So we just count the number of those facets which have the highest possible cardinality. So I have two minutes time. I want to be on the same level. I'm going to uh, very briefly give the definition of a system of parameters because uh, I suppose that maybe some master students also present, so uh, I hope I can do it in 10 minutes.
So system of parameters are very important in dimension theory, especially in the study of Cohen-Macaulay uh, models. Uh, here we uh, give the definition and show their existence. And um, as I told you in the study of uh, uh, multiplicity uh, of an ideal with respect to the model, systems of parameters play an important role, especially in cell theorems. They show themselves. So let's see the definition. Uh, at the moment, uh, our ring is either a local ring or a finitely generated, positively graded K algebra, such that K is a field. So let R either be a local ring or a finitely generated, positively graded K algebra, such that K is a field. Uh, in this case, we usually uh, call it, uh, in this case, we call R usually a star local because it has only one uh, graded maximum ideal, which again we show by M. So, uh, let M be a finitely generated. In the case that our ring is created, we suppose that the model is created as well. Uh, suppose that dimension of M is B. For the system of parameters, we mean a sequence in the maximal ideal. Uh, of let's be such that okay, a sequence x1 up to xt in M is called a, I, I will show it by SOP, abbreviation for system of parameters for M whenever the dimension of m mod x1 xt m is zero. So it should have two conditions. The length should be exactly the dimension of the model. And we, when we mod out by this submodule generated by x1 to xt m, the dimension should be a zero. Uh, I will show very briefly that uh, such sequence always exists when we have these assumptions on the ring and the module. So I don't repeat the assumption uh, again, just uh, I assume that uh, x1 to xn, okay, I write it in two parts. Uh, suppose that we have elements in the maximal ideal such that the dimension of m mod x1, xn, n is zero. Then we want to show that, first of all, dimension of M is less, I mean, this number is an upper bound for the dimension of the model. And in the second part, we want to show that um, there exists uh, exactly the elements in the maximal ideal such that the dimension this quotient model is zero. This is exactly the definition of system of parameters. So in part two, we just show the existence of system of parameters under these conditions. <laughs>
So for part one, uh, we have a sequence in M of lengths N. We want to show that this is an upper bound for the dimension. First of all, because uh, any module M can be considered as uh, R mod annihilator of M module. I call this mu ring R bar because M is an R bar module. I can replace R by R bar and uh, if you see this dimension also does not change if I do this replacement. So I may reduce to the case that um, support of M is exactly the spec of R. So we may reduce, I may replace um, R by R bar. So we can assume that the support of M is everything. Uh, I want to show that when we have this equality, uh, the dimension of this model to be zero uh, implies that, uh, in fact, the dimension of the ring mod x1 to xn is zero. Uh, okay, let's see why this is true. Uh, suppose that this dimension is not zero, what does it mean? Uh, one thing that I should mention in the statement is that if uh, I consider, I mean, our ring is either local ring or braided ring. In the case of braided, I choose these elements uh, to be homogeneous. This is important because here, when I want to say that this dimension is not zero, this means that uh, there exists a graded prime ideal other than ma a graded maximal ideal. So we have uh, a graded ideal P, which is not the maximal ideal. such that uh, P contains this ideal generated by X1 to Xn. This is exactly the meaning that uh, the, this dimension is not zero. So we have a chain of less at least one. So at the end of the chain, we always have uh, M mod by this ideal. So we have another term which comes from P. So, This implies that uh, the dimension of this quotient model is less than or equal to the dimension of m mod by x and m. This is clear, right? Because this times m contains p times m. And by your assumption, this is zero. So this dimension is zero. What does it mean? This means that uh, in the support, we only have the maximal ideal. So first of all, P does not belong to the support of M mod PM. This means that the localization of this module at P is zero. But the localization is, you know, is isomorphic to PRP and P. This is zero, so these two models are equal. So by Nakayama lemma, we have M P should be zero. But uh, this means that P does not belong to the support of M. 
and we have support of m is equal to every c. This is not possible. I mean, p is anyway a prime ideal. So here we get the contradiction. So there is no such p. So in, in the chain of prime ideals, we have only the maximal ideal, which implies that this dimension is zero. Uh, and this means that uh, the ideal x1 to xn is n primary. Or let's say uh, p is the only, uh, is, is a minimal prime ideal. This is better. Is a minimal prime ideal of. No, we use the Kuhl's generalized principal ideal theorem, which exactly uh, with this situation, when we have this condition, height of, um, height of this ideal, which is exactly the dimension of our ring. Is less than or equal to n. But the dimension of our model is because we, we, we suppose that support of n is everything. So the dimension of n is exactly the dimension of r. So dimension of n is less than or equal to n. Um, yeah. Can I continue? Okay. So for the second part, So we want to show that uh, there exists a system of parameters, I mean, a sequence of the right lengths such that this dimension is zero. We do it by induction on D. For D equal to zero, we have nothing to prove. Um, so let D be positive. What I want to do is to mod out the module by, by an element such that I can decrease the dimension by one and use induction. So um, suppose that the minimal, by mean of m, I mean the minimal prime ideals in the support of m. Suppose that these are p1 to pr. Uh, when D is positive, we, we are sure that M is not contained in this union by the prime avoidance theorem, because if M is contained in this union, it should be contained in one of them. So the dimension of M is height of one of these things, which is zero. This is not the case because dimension is positive. So we can choose an element in M minus this union. And in fact, when uh, our ring is graded, this element can be choose to be homogeneous. So uh, I just write in parentheses homogeneous in the case of uh, our ring is graded. And I mod out the module by um, xm. It's very easy to see that uh, the dimension of this module is less than or equal to d minus 1 because the element that I choose is outside uh, any minimal prime ideal. So when I have a chain of primes in the support of uh, this module, uh, the first term cannot be among these things. So the chain can be extended longer. Um, so this dimension cannot be D. I call this dimension C. So I can use induction uh, hypothesis to say that there exists 
uh, I say x1 up to xc in the maximal ideal. Again, uh, homogeneous in the graded case, unlike case one, such that um, the dimension of this module modeled by the sequence times module is zero. But this dimension is exactly the dimension of M mod X, X1 up to XC, M. So this is zero. Now I use uh, part one, which we can go that uh, this number, the, the length of this sequence, is an upper bound for the dimension. So dimension of m is less than or equal to c plus 1. And we call this t. So here we have c less than or equal to d minus 1. Here we have c bigger than or equal to d minus 1. So uh, d is exactly c plus 1 which is the length of the sequence that we found. So we, we found exactly a sequence of length d, such that this dimension is zero. And this shows the existence of systems of parameters. Um, I end up with an exercise. Uh, I want to show that um, in part two, Uh, we saw that uh, system of parameters exists. I want to show that uh, in the graded case. I mean, with this assumption that it's a finitely generated, generated positively graded K algebra. Um, is a standard graded and the field k is infinite so and r is a standard graded uh, these homogeneous elements can be chosen to be of degree one By part two, I mean part of part two of this theorem. So this is what I was going to say for today.